and I'm genderqueer. So what that means for you is that I prefer the gender neutral pronouns, Z, here, and here's. So Z replaces he or she, here replaces him or her, and here's replaces his or hers. Now I think that's important to talk about because there are some things that we should be aware of in order to make our language more inclusive. So chances are good that if you grew up here in the US, you grew up uh, learning that gender is a binary system. So what that means is you can either be a girl or a boy. These are your only two options. You're assigned that at birth and that never changes. Well, it's my hope that we leave here today with a little more inclusive picture and broader understanding of, of what gender is. So I wanna start by asking you a couple questions. Um, when somebody tells you that they're pregnant, what's the very first question that you ask? And I'll give you a hint. It starts with, is it a <laughs> boy or a girl? Right, right. And from the, the answer to that question dictates all of your hopes, dreams, and expectations for who that child will become, what careers they'll be interested in pursuing, even who they'll marry. Now let me ask you another question. This one's a little harder to answer out loud, so just think about it. Um, what defines you as a person? Is it your body, your race, your weight, your ability status, or is it something internal? I think that the vast majority of us could get on the same page that it's something internal that makes us who we are. And I think that that's an important concept to keep in mind as we move through this content today. So what is gender? Well, when I talk about my gender being genderqueer, that's just who I am, right? So that's my identity, who I know Ivy to be, the internal stuff we just talked about, not my body or the way you see me. But when I talk about the design of gender and how it functions in society, then we're talking about a socially constructed system of classifications. And we know that this is socially constructed rather than something that science tells us because it changes over time and from culture to culture. Now you might be sitting there thinking, there are only men and women, this is a universal truth. But it's not. So let's look at some examples of uh, different cultures that use non-binary systems of gender classification. We can look to two-spirit folks in Native American culture who embody what it is to be both male and female. They're often held with high regard and even considered spiritual leaders. Or we can look at Germany, where parents don't have to put gender markers on their child's birth certificates, and it was found to be inhumane to require people to surgically change their body in order to change their legal documentation. We can look at India, Pakistan, or Bangladesh that all offer third gender markers. Um, we can look at even New Zealand and Australia who do the same and they denote that by an X on their passports and uh, driver's licenses. The list goes on and on of these different examples, but I think there's one more to talk about when we have this conversation about gender in the South. And regardless of how you feel about the book yourself, that's the Bible. There are non-binary people in the Bible. They're called eunuchs, some by birth and some by choice, but they're not ever condemned. So how do we interact with gender here in the US? Well, we enforce a very rigid gender binary here, both in terms of identities and expressions. So we see the systemic erasure of non-binary identities in everything from our public restrooms to dorm rooms on college campuses, clothing sections and stores, and the list goes on and on. Um, I wanna take a minute to lift up Chase Culpepper who is one of the many blessings that this work has brought into my life. She's a brilliant young trans woman who was getting her driver's license at the Anderson DMV, but because her gender marker says that she's male, the DMV would not allow her to take her photo unless she removed her makeup. So I think that's just another important example to lift up as to how we enforce this rigid gender binary, even just in terms of expression. Both, um, Sometimes it's easier to understand a concept when we apply it to something that we can see first. So let's look at race. Um, race cannot be described accurately by checking a box as to if you are black or white. There's a large and growing segment of the population that falls somewhere in between and people who fall completely off of that scale. Well, if we take that and apply it to gender, it looks like this. Gender cannot be described accurately by checking a box as to if you are male or female. 
There's a large and growing segment of the population that falls somewhere in between that and people who fall completely off of that spectrum. Both of these questions are frequently presented to us as checkbox questions, but in order to answer them, they really require a fill in the blank. See, gender is a spectrum, and the number of identities that exist are only limited by the number of people that exist. When we allow ourselves to see beyond that binary, we allow ourselves to see the beauty that is diversity, and that this is not some hypothetical concept that I'm talking about. My people have existed for thousands upon thousands of years. So what's my truth? I'm frequently told that I'm in the wrong bathroom regardless of which one I'm in. <laughs> I'm misgendered about 85% of the time in my interactions with people on a daily basis. I'm occasionally harassed in public spaces, but more frequently studied in grocery stores as people try to figure out how they're allowed to interact with me as they try to filter me through this binary framework. When I say that this is socially constructed, that means that we just make this up. So for example, girls don't innately love the color pink and boys don't innately have an aversion to it. We teach them that. We didn't start assigning colors to gender until the early 20th century. And when we did, pink was a boy's color because it was closer to red, which was the color of warriors. Blue was a girl's color. I think that's important to talk about because if it's in our power to create the system that's restrictive to a point of harm to the transgender and gender nonconforming community, then it's also in our power to redefine the way we see and interact with gender and build a community that allows space for people who don't fall squarely in these boxes. So I want to lift up some reasons why this should matter to you. Blake Brockington, Leela Alcorn, Ash Hafner. These are just a few young transgender people who have already taken their lives so far this year. Or Penny Proud or Yasmin Payne or Ty Underwood who are just a few transgender women of color who have already been murdered this year. See, when we tell our boys that they're sissies when they express their emotions, and we call them like girls when they do something that we perceive to be weak, we build this society that shames femininity so intensely that it becomes more acceptable for them to lash out violently towards trans women, or even just women in general, than it is for them to express their emotions, embrace their femininity, or even just like to wear dresses in the color pink. Nationally, 4.6% of Americans have attempted suicide. When we look just at the transgender and gender nonconforming community, we see a staggering 41%. That's nearly 10 times the national average. And this rigid gender binary undoubtedly affects that number. We are a large and growing segment of the population, and this should matter to you because our lives matter. See, busting through this gender binary does not fall exclusively to our trans community. It falls to everyone who knows better. So now that you've been here, you've had your head broomed <laughs> with a little more inclusive picture and broader understanding of gender, you're one of those people too. And that responsibility falls to you too. So let's stop reducing people to check boxes and let's do that by finally unboxing this question of gender and draw a blank instead. Thank you for your time.